and welcome back folks Scott Bowersox here Team Compass wanted to go ahead and do our final video on the upgrade from the 7HV to the full chrono spec and today as you might have guessed we are going to be working on installing the head and everything that goes along with that all right just to point out a few quick things the uh, blade grip on the new one has a different finish of course starting there this has the shinier and this was the more satin finish this is also lighter you can feel it immediately and this uh, grip is ever so slightly shorter than the old one I don't know if that's going to come across just a little bit but the arm itself is a little bit longer so that at the end They're, they're the same length. <laughs> Next, the, uh, this is the spindle from the 7HV. And this is the, the new spindle from the Kronos. And again, it's pretty obvious that this is much larger. This is 8mm uh, on the old one. And the new one is a full 10 millimeters. So this is the same size as the old main shaft on our 7HV. So that's definitely an improvement. And then the head block itself, again, noticeably lighter when you hold them in your hands. And this, again, is just a little bit longer now than the old one. About the same difference that the blade grip was shorter. So just a different look at that. But they are the same height, and they both have the two holes. We're always going to use the, the top hole so it sits farther down on the head, just like on the 7HV. And also new is the way the dampening works. We now have two of these. This one's already in. This one goes on the other side. As you can see, they're, they're angled. So when they fit inside, Now I have the, the V here, and when you put our new head button on, that goes right on down in there, and it's going to squeeze those together. We now have six individual O-rings that we use for damping. And these all go inside. And these, uh, they come greased from the kit, so making kind of a mess of everything here. And then also we have this plastic spacer. This goes between these dampers here and the main grip. And I'll go ahead and show that later when we put this together. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on here. Push this in. Let me put the big one on and just double check. That should be the, the looser fit on your spindle. Go ahead and drop that in. Uh, you want the exposed, the open end here, to be to the inside. Basically that just keeps the grease from flying outwards, keeps it more inside. And just double check that goes in the right way. And the smaller And then our little spacer, this here separates the, uh, the radial bearing so that it rides on the inner race there. doesn't get pressed against. And then our outer bearing. Push that in. And then just make sure that you have the, that spacer is lined up in the middle there so that it'll slide through the shaft. And then that part is all set. Now we're going to go ahead and push these in and there's six in total make sure they all seat straight and we'll get bunched up go ahead and push that in and the next you're gonna have that spacer is gonna go on and you're gonna want the one on the other side here I think I'll just put the our 10 millimeter spindle through the 
You want that about even. And then these go on. And then you can slip your blade grips over it. There's a notch here that's going to center this. It goes right in this gap here. And then what you want to do is you're going to go ahead and tighten this all the way down. And then that is centered. And you're going to want to go ahead and use your thread lock. And I'm going to go ahead and take this all the way out, put some on, and put it back together. Okay, guys, here's a uh, quick tech tip. Before you put any spindle on and uh, tighten it down, Loctite is very important. However, having clean surfaces and threads for the Loctite to do its job are critical, especially on you know a spindle bolt going into the head. I mean, this is this is your lifeline here, so we need to make sure that this is as uh, secure as we can make it. So one of the things to point out here is with all the uh, the lube on those thrust bearings, this gets a little bit greasy. And inevitably, some of that grease could go ahead and get in the threads and also from machining. And even in the uh, the manual, it is stated that you know they, they don't make too much attempt uh, from the manufacturing to go ahead and guarantee that these are clean. And even if they did, this is our models. We're going to go ahead and do this anyway. So I definitely want to draw your attention to that. So what I suggest is to go ahead and... Uh, I just have a Ziploc baggie here, a shorter one. And we go ahead and you put your spindle inside and we take our two spindle bolts and put those in. Grab your isopropyl alcohol. This is going to go ahead and take and carry the, the dirt and oil out by actually shaking it. It doesn't do as much good just to let it sit and soak. So I just wanted to point that out as well again. And when you dry these off, actually go ahead and attach a wrench so you can spin it around here or do it by hand. But you want to actually wipe off the threads afterwards. And here you can see the oil and the dirt that got carried away, loosened up from the alcohol. And then I just take some compressed air. clean out the inside of that. Before you put the grips on and tighten it down, you want to go ahead and put the head button on what this will do is center the uh, the plastic in the in the middle here so that it doesn't slide either way when you're tightening it up. Now with the uh, threads cleaned, we can go ahead and put the grips on. Again, notice leading edge control. Go ahead and grab your Loctite. Get the one started. Once you've all got it, go ahead and just go ahead and draw that up. Make sure that's firm. Don't get completely carried away, but you do want it tight. And then go ahead and I want you to check to make sure that these spin smoothly and are also leading edge. So this is in the right direction here. Now, when you're checking this one, there's, there's a little bit of notchiness to it at first just sitting here and that's to be expected talked with some of the other guys and everything in this that's just how they are I've seen other models like that when they're at rest but what you want to do is go ahead and pull on it and then try to turn it and it's going to get a little bit easier it's going to free ride up and the other thing is that after flying about 510 flights any of that should go ahead and uh, get settled in once the, uh, the dampers get seated and everything fully, that should go ahead and wear in nicely. Okay, and then regarding 
uh, the head button tension. What, uh, what I'm gonna do is go all the way tight and then back it out a couple turns. So basically about a millimeter or so, maybe 1.5 millimeters of spacing. Just to start with, I run a lower head speed than a lot of guys anyway. So I'm gonna leave it right about there. It sounds like that should be fine. And then go ahead and just double check that once you get it where you want it, that you want to uh, re-lock tight these screws here before you go ahead and fly. All right, the next thing is the swash. And this one seems fairly obvious here. This one, of course, from the 7HV, and this one is from the Kronos. And as you can see, it's, it's a rather large improvement. This thing is definitely substantial. But what we want to do before we move on with the build is go ahead and make sure that you take each of the uh, balls out and put your Loctite on and then put them back in. And with all those Loctited, we're ready to go ahead and move this onto the helicopter as well. And as you can see with the larger spacing versus the old one, this is what's playing a, a large role in improving the geometry of the model and the reason why the new Kronos is flying very, very well. Very linear and precise. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. The other thing to note is that the new main shaft is also longer by a few millimeters than the old one. So this is going to sit a little bit higher when the head's mounted. Just wanted to go ahead and point that out as well. Okay, now we're at to the point where we're going to have to start taking some more stuff off of the existing 7HV. So we're going to need to take off these bearing blocks and the servos that go along with them to go ahead and put the new ones on. You can see that the new one, the servo arms are a little bit shorter. So physically the servos are going to move inwards just a little bit. Again, to help work on that geometry. So just wanted to go ahead and point that out. Otherwise, these are basically the same kind of design, except obviously the bigger, the bigger bearings there that I've mentioned before. Okay guys, to make things a little bit easier, I went ahead and broke this down into two different parts for the technical upgrade. This one had all the comparisons and in installing the head, and uh, join us next time when we go ahead and install the bearing blocks and all the parts that we put together onto our model, and uh, go ahead and set it up. Appreciate you guys watching, and stay tuned for the next episode. What you want to do then is go ahead and pretty rigorous, rigorous, ah, you want to shake it.